What's up, y'all? Welcome to another session of Coast to Coast. Um, it's been a while. We've been setting some things up for season two for you guys. We took a little bit of a break. Um, season two was was definitely a journey and um, lots of fun, lots of um, content that we were able to produce for you guys. Um, look forward to what we have coming up in season two. We're, we're about to get back on um, Flex. So we're just gonna jump off another session of Coast to Coast here with me, myself, Saul Mercado. I got a co-host, JD, Jared, the Daredevil Dillinger. You see his shirt, here comes Daredevil, the man without fear. That man fears nothing. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> and you got Mr. President over hey, there, Gabriel Daniel Norwood. What's happening, what's happening? Call that man one chains, one chains. <laughs> You know, wear two chains. It's so cool. We ain't gotta wear one chains. <laughs> now, nah, what's up, fellas? Man, I miss you guys' faces. Yes. Um, we we uh, you know it's 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 nice to get back out here and put some content out for these people. Um, I want to kick it off by talking about just what's hot right now. The big, you know, what all these NBA players are talking about. What you guys think about it? Um, the sixty-five game rule. For awards you know they there was a big you know thing about it with joel and b going down that he was you know fortunate you know the whole all of a sudden he wasn't available for the denver game and then you know people were talking about that it scared of Jokic and all this other stuff and then he forced the next game end up getting hurt but i if you see how he got hurt whether he sat out a game or not was injured or not well, he was gonna get hurt <laughs> Bro, Jonathan Kaminga just landed on his on his leg. Unintentional basketball play. Yeah. So, yeah. Did that, did that have I mean, anything to do with him forcing anything? Like, forcing? Yeah. I mean, outside, I mean, I guess the argument was that he wouldn't have been on the court at all, right? Like, that's, that's really just the argument. But at the end of the day, like, it's what we sign up for in terms of you, you put yourself in the line of fire every time you step in between the lines. It, it could happen yeah. in game one. It could happen in game 37 it could happen in the playoffs it, it i i get it but at the same time it, it's basketball it's what we sign up for and it's unfortunate it sucks to have an mvp caliber player you know out for an undisclosed amount of time now um just depending on his recovery and things like that but yeah he's having surgery it, yeah yeah so surgery we'll meniscus see with the time. Right? yeah yeah i mean that's that's a, that's a minor surgery clean it up back in you know four four to five weeks depending on, you know, yeah. his rehab and stuff like that. But what do you think about that rule, Gabe? That obviously he's going to be out. So he wanted him, he probably was going to win MVP this year, you know? So now he's not eligible for that, for that award. I mean, I, I personally think it makes sense. I, I think the rule to have some type of minimum requirement uh, in terms of games played, uh, I think it makes sense, you know, just given the pass and, you know, load management and things like that. Because at the end of the day, it, it's it's a player-driven league, but it's entertainment also. You know, your, your fans are out there supporting, paying good money to come out and watch everybody play. And, you know, naturally as a player, we want to be able to present and, and give our best product as well. But you also have to play through some stuff. Like you, you gotta, I think Anthony Edwards came out before the season and basically said, I want to play every game. Like. I don't want to rest. I, I want to go out and compete and play, which I'm sure everybody wants to compete to a level, but you have to be smart. But for me, I like the rule. I, I think there has to be some type of requirements, minimum requirements to, to be eligible and to be considered, uh, you know, rather than just getting hot in the last 20 games. And you know what I mean? One of those situations, yeah. I, I think it makes sense. I think, you know, something to, to bring up that, that, that would maybe drive speculation. I'm curious to know how Joel Embiid's uh, recovery, manage uh, therapy management. How how well does he treat rehab? Because what I'm getting to is everyone in the NBA and athletes. We we know this. Everyone, 100 percent, everyone's battling something. You are not yeah. perfectly ready 100%. and uninjured in any way during the course of the season. Everyone is effed up with something. Um, so with, with Embiid, like, could have this been avoided? 
did did he really maximize his therapy which i'm i i have no basis off of this but i think you know circling back around i'm with gabe like you have to play a certain amount to be considered into these talks of mvp you have to be accountable to play for sure to to get noticed and i mean it's almost like out of sight out of mind like if you're not playing these games then people forget real quick anyways <laughs> um yeah of, of people who are the the spotlight or the star figure so if you're not there re-establishing yourself on a weekly monthly nightly basis then it's like on to the next one yeah i mean i like because you see now because of the rules you've seen Kawhi leonard play all these games you know these guys aren't load managing anymore they're not sitting out um you see in some of the some of the top anthony davis how many you know to see him yeah. on the court every night yeah. um, this season is is it's incredible it's obviously working for for the rule to be put in i mean 65 games out of 82 missing 17 isn't bad like when they started bringing up the stats of like these old school guys and and they don't have you know the games that they played the amount of you know games that they missed and and were playing for these awards you know there's always the battle of that era against this era, you know, but those guys were playing almost every game. And it's like, they make a good point. People pay all this money to come see, and you make millions of dollars for people to watch you play a game. And yeah. so, yes, you got to listen to your body, your body, you go, yeah. you go through these things, but people want, they come to these games to watch you. And then you're sitting out because you're load managing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it comes, it, you get paid millions of dollars because you put in all this work to get on the court, to play on the court, you know? So, I mean, for me, they they have the top of the line, medical rehabs, you know what I'm saying? Preventive, preventive stuff that's, you know, next level that, you know, probably the top of the line across the whole world, you know? So get in there, get you, I mean, look at LeBron, bro. I mean, of course, I'm right. going to bring up LeBron. I'm going to bring up LeBron. <laughs> Incredible. Let, let, let's let's wait for the comments on this one too. He <laughs> needs to be studied, bro. Did you guys see that picture of him in the All Star game with Jalen Brunson, like a little kid? Yeah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> like, dog. Like he's now he's headlining New York against LA, Jalen Brunson, and like this guy was a really? this boy was a little kid looking up to LeBron at an All Star game, taking picture with him while eating nachos, like. Why, why he's playing in an all-star game and now you're headlining the game with him still freaking 21 years later. It's like, bro, it's crazy. Bro, I got, to a crazy, I got a crazy one like that. Calvin Oftana sent me a picture of him when he was a kid with me in my Morocco days. And it's just, dude, yeah, bro, it was, it's a bad look, bro. Scotty, <laughs> Scotty sent me one of those. Scotty Thompson. Really? Yeah, yeah. Sent me one. And he was like, he was like, he was like, cool, yeah, like I idolized you when I was in high school. I was like, damn. It's almost a disrespect, like F you, Calvin, Scotty. <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> nah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> crazy. Cool, but, but again, Jared Daredevil Dillinger isn't headlining any games right now. So no. I mean, that shows you, shows you <laughs> LeBron James. <laughs> he's, he's, he's here doing coast to coast he's doing coast to coast for me <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's it bro i know but, it's incredible but, for what he's doing man it's no secret uh, the amount of money that that lebron puts in to his body bro and so if he can do it these other pros instead of buying the expensive watch and jewelry and tricking at the strip club go put money the way lebron does to help his body you know what I'm saying? That's how you last. It, here's the blueprint. Obviously, he's a specimen, but there's the blueprint. Like invest in your body. You it's know, if you, it's and it's gonna pay off. It's gonna pay off because like Halliburton, it's gonna pay off yeah. because when now, now when you play those games, you win those awards, now you can make the super max and get mm -hmm. all NBA. It works out at yeah. the end. Yeah. And the crazy, but the crazy thing with all that said, something could still happen. Like it, it's still the sport we play, you know what I mean? Like we're talking, we st we started a conversation with MB and it was a contact thing. It wasn't like one of those non-contact, you know what I mean? Did he, re it was a, con yeah. people run into each other. You're going to land on somebody's foot. You're going to like, those things are going to happen. It's just the way of the world. It's the way of the world of sports. And 
Yeah. You know, hopefully it, it happens. Something like uh, that. <laughs> or are you going to run into Draymond kicking you in your nuts or something? <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> it's still wild. Dude, no, but with all that said, you know, it is February, Black History Month, but it also means NBA All-Star Weekend is coming up, Indianapolis. You know, the festivities are going to be crazy. But with that said, you know, the All-Star teams are put out, starters, reserves. But we got to talk All-Star snubs. I know Saul, I think everybody already knows where he's going to go with his. But I just wanted to open up the... Yeah, you should we start with Saul? Saul, you want to yeah, get us started? Saul, wait, no Sacramento love or something? What's going on? Is he going to go get his jersey? What, sack? Hold on, no sack? Quick. Hold on real quick, bro. Hold on real quick. Man. Okay. Let me just wrap you, don't have to put the hat, you don't have to put the hat on with the, the smoke. Let me just put it. What happened? Come on, dog. What happened? Someone averaging 20... 13.3 rebounds and eight assists is not in the all-star game. What? Who's that? Like what in what world? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> what world do you average 20, 13, and 8 and have 31 straight double doubles? In what world do you not make an all-star team, bro? It's I stuck, well, bonus it's the guy. West. It's the but West. Who, so but who are you taking? So who are you taking off the list? Anthony Davis, his team's 25. And we're fifth in the we're fifth in a stacked West. The guys, at, he's clearly the 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 head honcho. Him and De'Aaron Fox. It not not one of them made it. Not I one. mean Sabonis is he's right there with uh, Rudy Gobert. La- wanting to make a quote like I'm going to be laughing about this when I'm in the Hall of Fame of all the snubs that I got for uh, yeah, well, not being All Star game. But Rudy Gobert Fox, is a Fox made it though, right? Uh, no. That's what is it? Wow. He didn't make it as a reserve. So no, no sack, oh, no sack love. So this, so this ESPN that says De'Aaron Fox at the bottom. Oh, that means he made it. Oh, so he replaced somebody from injury. That's it. Oh, okay, okay, not outright. Oh, okay, there. I got you. Okay, not outright. Not there. outright. Yeah, not outright. Okay, okay. it's somebody. So- Someone has to get snubbed. Someone's getting snubbed. Hey, There's just not enough hey, spots. Hey, the one for me that surprised me, actually, I had to go back and look at what he was. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Trey Young. I didn't realize because I don't watch the Hawks a lot. They're not, you know, must see TV like they were. Just, But I didn't realize the numbers that he was putting up. Yeah, like he's, he's playing out of his mind right now. No one likes him. Uh, there, there's a rumblings, you know, maybe it's a, it's a political game too, right? And the rumblings is that no one likes him. No one likes him on his team. That That's 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 for one. Uh, I think that's that, hair. Whatever it is. Well, wear a hat then, you know? Wear a hat all the time. I got thin hair. Wear a hat, yeah. Wear a headband. Nah, he's been snubbed over and over though. Yeah, yeah, he's a little maybe he needs to stop being a bozo and, and be cool with people because apparently you never know if that him. stuff's true, bro. True, true. You no, know, man, like the true. You never he know. Looks like like, a likable guy. He looks like an <laughs> unlikable guy. You, know, <laughs> you, you can kind of get a vibe from people, and this is all just my own Neander <laughs> opinion. But he doesn't look like the coolest, you know, guy that you wouldn't want to rock with. What's an unlikable guy look like, bro? You can feel their vibes and their aura. Like there are people that, and you, you can't judge a book by its cover. But there are people, you know, like, um, you know, Ali Peak looks like a a hole. You know, Ali Peak, man, not, not, just the, just the looks. And you know what? Another one. I I tell Christian to this to his face. Like he looks. Oh yeah. Like him. Yeah. yeah see, see how you just went immediately. Oh yeah, definitely him. But I think and he's a hole. I mean, you got to um, actually, he he actually is one and okay with it. He's actually just okay. okay. He's comfortable in his own skin. Yeah, he's, he's okay. very he's he's self aware, and I tell him like he he's an a hole. You you you're an intimidating a hole to people, and <laughs> he laughs. So he, he knows it. But yeah, so, so German, like, German, German culture, man. They're just yeah, they're not it's funny. Just, it's just they're culture different, bro. Y'all about to get yourselves in trouble. <laughs> hey. My, my wife has no, no, German ancestry. German, German, German. Is, is German too. 
No, nah, because really. like Ger- it's not. It's the German <laughs> culture is so different, bro. So different from like Filipinos. He's very it's the opposite. Christian's very direct and like he'll that is say, true. That is true. That is true. Which which he could come across. But even if he didn't open his mouth, I agree with JD. He looks like a. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's just certain people, and then with Trey, just I don't know, short guy syndrome, or just I don't know what it is, man. I have I, I have no idea who he is as a person. <laughs> do I look like this boy? Like if you saw yes. me, you'd be like, uh, yeah. So yeah, you train yeah. Christian, cool. <laughs> just, I mean, that's it. You know, different lanes. You know, you're you're a you're a unique, more so than this guy or that guy. But just looking at you, you kind of look like. Eh. <laughs> 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 but since we since we brought up the snubs, though, I gotta say, yeah. Ty- Tyrese Maxey, man, first time All Star. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty hyped to see him in the All Star game. But right off an of injury, comes back and has a career high fifty. Like he, yeah. he's he's fun to watch, and you no, know, especially with yeah. Embiid out, it's going to be interesting to see what he does in the second half of the season. Yeah, he yeah. Th- them getting rid of Harden really helped him out a lot. Like he he took he was like, hey, I got this. That, that he yeah. really stepped up to another level this year. I like that. Um, I actually knew he was going to do that, so I picked him in my fantasy draft and then traded him to Gabriel. Traded him to Gabe. Oh. And like not <laughs> fifty, and I'm still in last place. <laughs> Who's in first? Who is in first? Um, I don't uh, know. Somebody we don't know. Yes, um, okay. somebody that has somebody that has all the time in the world to just make sure that their roster is always set. Yeah. They, they do all the drop and ads right at yeah. midnight when they can and. Those guys. I don't know how you guys do that. Yeah, that's tough, man. Stay on top of that. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. But how about uh, let's talk about you know the 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 teams right now. Um, you for, know, in the West, East. Oh, yeah. So I mean, who you guys got? Um, the Boston looks really good right now. Um, Boston does look good. I, I already mean the Bucks out. Bucks out of my pick because they got Doc Rivers now. So he gonna blow some type, some type of lead. Blow it. Okay, I, I got a hot take. I got Clippers, Clippers in Boston. No one would buy it. They're like one of the hottest teams right now. Well, because of one, Harden is on the team, and no one cares what he's doing in the regular season. It's all really gonna matter at the end uh, of the playoffs. So there's gonna be a big narrative like, can they stay healthy? Can Harden? actually perform when he's needed in the biggest moments so i think i think the writing is on the wall like in terms of like show up or show out or it's all or bust like they're, they're, they want to win now obviously they're built to win now they, they can't do it in a couple years from now okc's right. coming up they're 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 going to be a force within a couple years um so they I think they're going to put all their chips in the bag and go all out for, for this year, for next year. Um, yeah, I like Clippers, man. I want to see Clippers, man. Clipper Nation. Yeah. Okay. I'm interested to go. I'm interested in the Eastern Conference more so with the Knicks. Just in terms of the run they're making without, without OG, without Julius Randle. I just want to see what it looks like for a consistent amount of time in the second half of the season because you know for a while it was, it was Brunson and Randall just kind of having freedom to really do what they want but now OG kind of fills that spot that they need in terms of you know the defensive presence with the Knicks Tom Thibodeau they're always going to defend they're always going to get after it on that side of the basketball but I feel like there could still be a trade looming you know there's there's rumors of them getting more bench scoring you know I've seen names like uh, Clark Sandin and Ooh, Which would be, you know what I mean? Dante DiVincenzo is playing out of his mind right now. Yeah, the last couple balling. Balling. He's balling. He's nice. balling. Feeling over. And, you know, it's tough. We, they lost Mitchell Robinson, but having Harkenstein, Jericho Sims down there, Precious Achua playing well, they're not like the star names that are going to be, maybe not have to run into MB uh, if he's not available. Um, or, you know, they have to match up with the honest and things like that. But I think. You know, the Knicks are just interesting. I'm not saying they're going to make some crazy run, but I want to see them healthy and how they and what place they finish the East. Well, who do you think is going to make it to the finals anyways for, for on the East side? Boston. I'm trying to remember. Boston? 
I think I said before the season enter too much. It's it's due time for them. It's it's, it's due. due, man. They and kept dogs too. They've yeah. gone through they their all the pieces. Yeah, they gone through their process of going, losing, going, losing. Then they added yeah. if if Porzingis could be healthy at the right time. Then they yeah. got Drew. Bro, they're tough. Yeah, yeah, they're nice, bro. They're, do you think they have enough? Do you think they have enough depth to get it done, though? Big Yo, bodies, right? Legit, they bro. got mad guards, yeah. but do they have enough? Bigs? Peyton Pritchard comes off the bench for them. Peyton Pritchard plays they, well. Derek they, White's big good year starting. Who are their, they, have a, a, they have a, a, a ton of one through threes, but do they have enough bigs to battle? What is that? Huh? Nemus Keita? You know Nemus? Nemus. Oh, the Kings? He, he's the, he's yeah, the he only was. he's the only Portugal Portuguese player from Portugal in the, in the, in the game. That's yeah, in the NBA. Yeah, he he know. One and all. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, he plays well he for him. He comes in, defends the rim, got good touch around the rim. Big yeah. bodies, like seven foot, so he's he's yeah. tough for him, man. I, I I like them a lot in the East. They're they're for me, they're the team to beat. Um, it was Milwaukee again until you know they got a lot of stuff going on over there. I just don't think that you know if they we got in the West, so um, Sack. it's hard. I mean, obviously, I'm a I'm a Sack fan, rooting for Sack. I'm hoping that they could they could make a move. Um, before trade deadline, I w- I'm interested to see what Lakers do at the trade deadline. See if they're really, if they're really going to make that push for Deontay Murray. D'Lo's been playing well, so his stock's going up. You maybe that maybe you know, sure. Maybe that's they they pull the trigger on that trade now, or they keep D'Lo the way that he's been playing. You know, he's been playing well. Um, I would, you know, they if if the Lakers are there and they make a push to get into the playoffs and and they make a push towards the end of this season. It's hard to go against the Lakers because they have everything. Just to see what they did against the Knicks, like defensively, the way yeah. Anthony Davis locks the paint up yeah. when they're all locked in, they have the pieces, they have the length to defend one through five. Like because in the playoffs, the game slows down. It's all about getting stops, you know, crucial stops, multiple stops in a row. When you got Anthony Davis, probably one of the best paint protectors ever the game has ever seen. You just seen what he did against New York. You know, and then and then you got LeBron locking up Brunson. Nah, he, he didn't lock up Brunson, but he did one play. He locked one up. one clip. One that one clip. <laughs> hey, he locked in that one clip. He did. He did. He chased him all over the place. Yeah, chased him all the way. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be hard to go into Lakers, and then and then uh, again Denver. You know, hmm. Denver. so so no chance, no chance for no chance for Phoenix. They they got no chance. I don't like them, bro. I'm not. So I think because I, I got. I got this. I got to I, like I, I think I picked Phoenix before the season started to come out of the West. If we if we go back to other episodes, I'm pretty sure I had Phoenix and Philly. Philly now changes, but uh, yeah. I think I had I had Phoenix. So I got to stick with my pick. I got to be a man of my word. You can you can just switch how I did, like Germany to USA to uh, <laughs> you know oh, the world. It's the world. You can do. Pretty easy. Yeah. Not that hard. No one no one watches. No one's watching us. You could just switch. <laughs> switch it though. It's cool. They're just no throwing one's that under out. the rug. Yes. Yeah. Right. No one's calling me out yet. That is true. Um, that is true. Uh, I'm wondering about Indiana, how they're gonna fare in, in, in the playoffs. Cause how Saul was saying, like, you know, the game slows down. And yeah, they're gonna have to yeah. Exactly, right? I, I they might have issues come playoff time because the thing's going to be slowed down. And when that happens, that's like the, the main part of their offense and their philosophy. You never know. They made a run. They made a run in the in season tournament. They can get hot. Get hot. Get hot. Get hot. Get hot at the right time. That's really, we, we all know that. That's what it's yeah. all about. You get hot. You get momentum at the right time. You, yeah. you know, you could just kind of beat. It's about matchups too. You know, obviously the in-season tournament is is a knockout game you know one and out i don't think that they beat boston in a seven game series you know yeah. what i'm saying but you know it they they added siakam you never know that's uh adam, adam siakam is is he's it, proven could, could help them yeah mm-hmm. they're, they're 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 definitely a dark horse for sure yeah yeah i agree they're a dark horse in the east They'll be my who's a, who's a dark horse in the West? OKC. Okay,
I'm going to read some wisdom onto you guys, and I think this will resonate with everyone. So a common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to be right. But that's not true at all. The best relationships are the ones where both parties put in the work to make it great. As they say, teamwork makes the dream work. And how I can relate that to myself and my relationship with my wife is that being completely transparent and letting each other know how we feel in, you know, with a weekly update to check on each other, you know, emotionally, physically is something that's really important in our relationship. I think when we have a unity of a partnership, we both have strengths and weaknesses. And we both need to fill in a role that will help benefit the family and continue to level us up as we you know, live our life together. If you can come to together and have an understanding that let's align our goals together. Let's so this will make our life easier on this world while we're still here. Then you'll be grinding towards the same goals or you'll be aligning to the same goals So you'll put your focus on that instead of putting focus and strain on your relationship with your partner itself. And that's something that I've been polishing and reiterating with my wife to to further enhance our relationship together. And it's just been getting better and better through the years. I've been with her now for seven years and it feels like year one every year. I am so grateful to be with her. I'm so happy that we have this beautiful relationship, but it really had to take work. And I did make mistakes along the way that would not be as aligned as it should be with our relationship. And the best part of this is that no one's perfect and that you're always trying to strive to make it better. And, and really, in reality, you do have to fail to succeed with anything in life, whether that be sports, business, relationships. As long as you're growing and not making the same mistake over and over again, you're actually applying what you did wrong and trying to be better for it. That's what life is all about. So oftentimes we have a hard time navigating through tough moments and that's perfectly fine. Good news is that we have access to therapy as a safe space to work through the challenges we face in our relationships. Therapy and basketball may seem like two very different things, but they actually have a lot in common. Both are ways of coping with stress, improving mental health, and developing skills. These skills are important to pick up to equip yourself to best defend against the challenges life will throw at you and your relationships. Therapy can help you understand yourself better, work through your emotions, and take full control of your thoughts and emotions. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, it's convenient, and it's very accessible. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for it or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LetItFly today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LetItFly. I mean, I guess I think Sack would still be considered a dark horse. Yeah. You think they have enough? Have they been through the fire enough of of pain and suffering to be so on point now to take that next step? You think? To be honest, the what what they're we're probably the second most inconsistent team in the league right now, mm-hmm. behind the Lakers, because the Lakers will show up and beat anybody. They look like the best team in the league, and then the next day lose like like LeBron said, lose to the Pistons. You know, like they're. I got a hot take. Go for a hot take on this. Let's hear it. LeBron, LeBron's the oldest guy in the league. Hot take? No, no, no. Oh. This it's about it's it's about supplementing why Sacramento plays bad or so inconsistently. What, what's your hot take? What's your hot take, JD? You know, when I see Darren Fox play, I I notice that he'll take weeks, two three weeks of not showing as much effort as he would show in in a range of games. It's like, it's almost like a light switch. It, it almost appears that he's not interested or challenged enough in these games because he is so talented that he just loses interest. And and he'll look at that schedule and he'll see like, oh, okay, we got a big game coming. We got, we got Golden State match up with Steph Curry. And okay, that game, oh, he'll come back alive randomly. He'll just turn it on and he will be that guy again and he'll be vocal and he'll be showing much, you know, better better body language within his team. Uh, I mean, 
tape doesn't lie. You watch the tape, you can you can visually see when he is not caring and when he's not locked in. And I and maybe that can be attributed to the way the Sack Kings are inconsistent because they kind of go off his motor more or less. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. So shockingly, that I disagree with you. Um, yeah. I think I think what you're what you're seeing is there was a there was a stretch. I mean, the guy's averaging 28 points, 27.5, point five, five and four. Like how how much do you really take off? What I think you do see is there was a stretch where he was struggling, but it but there was something off the court that they said was going on with him. There was something that was that was bothering him off the court. Something was going on. There was reports of all that. Um, so and we all know that that you know some people could play, could play through those things that are going off on court because that's their their safe space and 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 do that but we're all human at the end of the day you know what i'm saying when something's really you're really struggling that that's hitting home and family it it affects your game for one mm. for two he you have saw you've seen him take on this role of kind of he paces himself throughout the first three quarters and then fourth quarter take over time like he does that he's done that all last year he's done that this year that's why he was clutch player of the year last year and even this year so i mean he's he kind of picks his points because he's so good and it's like he can score at will anytime he wants maybe that's where you're like why don't he just do that why don't he just do that the whole game is he like coasting but he, i really believe that it's part of the the whole system system that they have in place as sack to say hey Darren, we know in the fourth quarter it's your time. Let us let us help you. You know what I'm saying? Defer a little bit, run the offense, be the PG in the first three quarters. Then when we need a bucket, we know we're going to you. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what you see. I mean, the guy's averaging literally like what I said, 28, 5, and 4, bro. Like he can't be he's doing he's doing more this year than he did last year when he was an all-star. Hmm. Well, he, he is an all-star. Again, Gabe, Gabe just told me he's an all-star. Bro. Yeah, so I mean, it's 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 pretty crazy, but I think what you did see was was what he was going through off the court. Um, they're inconsistent. For one, I believe they're inconsistent because of just the way that they play. Their style of play is high volume of threes, right? They get up and down. They play at a fast pace. Their their offense is really predicated off of a lot of ball movement shot making people moving they're gonna get open shots because of their offense because of Sabonis creates a lot of stuff when they're hitting their threes they could beat any team in the league like smacking teams and then when they're not they struggle on they struggle on the defensive end so we're not like really a lockdown defensive team so when we're not hitting shots we're gonna struggle on that end because we play at such a fast pace right we come down we'll shoot the first three four seconds of the shot clock if we got to open three that's their system so if we're not hitting those shots, I think that's why we're so inconsistent. Guys like Kevin Huerter, Harrison Barnes, those guys have been inconsistent. Even Keegan Murray, like he's having a great year, but there's games like last game, he had five points. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're, their shooters have been struggling. Last year, there wasn't so much inconsistency because Huerter was on point almost all season. Like he was hitting the shots all season. Malik Monk's been inconsistent. You know, he's he comes off the bench and he's their firepower. So, I mean, I think that's where the inconsistency lies, not within Darren, Darren Fox. So I think you always know what you're going to get out of Darren Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. Like they, mm -hmm. they bring it every game. Is there any other pod that gets more Kings? The Kings get more attention? <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Sight, sight. Hey, I respect it, man. They're, they're fun to watch. Pods all over the world, like, bro. NBA on ESPN talks about the Zach fan. Hello. I like, I like watching them play. I, I do like watching them play. They're, like you said, I think it's that inconsistency that also makes it fun. Like, you don't know. Are they going to come out and hit, break some record for threes in a game today? Or, you know what I mean? Are they going to give up 160 points? Like, it's, right. it's, it's one of those situations. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hoping, though, in the, I'm hoping the playoffs that, that, you know, we could show what we did last season. Obviously, we got knocked out in game seven of the first round, but I really believe like that, that experience will take them to another level, depending on the matchup, whatever that matchup is in the first round. Um, 
I what's think a bad we'll matchup for that? What's a bad matchup first round for SAC? <laughs> Warriors again. <laughs> you think so? I don't think Warriors make it though, but I'm mean, obviously if we run into like say we're the fourth or fifth seed, then we run into like the Clippers or the the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Like that that would be tough. Yeah. I would like to see like say a Minnesota. I think that would be a good yeah. matchup. Would love to see like a Minnesota or like you know even even the we get smacked by the Pelicans. That's literally the worst matchup. They smack the Kings every time we play. So I hope you don't see them. But I didn't tell the I, I, I want to shift gears because I'm just curious to what happened. Maybe Gabe knows what happened. Talking about the PBA finals, Magnolia, San Miguel. What happened after the game with Calvin and his wife to Mo's wife? What happened to that? It's all over the Internet. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think I just like everybody else saw, I mean, anybody else that wasn't in the arena or there in the hallway saw, you know, the, the videos and, and the back and forth there. Um, that was all over the internet. But, you know, it's it's situations that have happened before. You know, it's, it's one of those things too. Like, I, it makes me think yeah, why we don't have parking at the same time. Like, that, I feel like these situations could be avoided if there were like, designated areas like we all have to like leave through the same exits and you know what i mean stuff like that's bound to happen whether it's especially in the playoffs it's, it's the heat of the battle yeah. Lots it's, of money on the line. you know so i don't know to answer your question i don't know what happened yeah. um it's just unfortunate that it took away from a game where san miguel came out and played out of their minds and a series that they're dominating like the conversation should be more towards that and how Magnolia can get back in it and what they need to do. But yeah. you know, it's it's a yeah, but you know Calvin. You know Calvin. He's um he's gonna make something of it. I mean, if but I think to... that's but that's yeah. uh bro. It ain't bro. it ain't right what he did to Coach George. That was my that, that was, was wild. wild. That, that, that that was that was that was what happened uncalled for the whole like. Oh, I can't it. But you know, Coach George has a you know, yeah. got him oh, on yeah. yeah. So it's like he's sitting there making yeah. fun of that. That was like, a that was a bit too far. And I think even yeah. he would say that was a bit too far. That ain't right, bro. That ain't right. That was right. But but for what I, I I'm inter- I'm interested to see if there's CCTV. Um which I'm sure there is. If there isn't a player with a two oh lead in a series. To lead, if there isn't a player who you can afford to, I don't know, maybe have kicked out a game, suspended one game, that doesn't go in the game for San Miguel and Calvin up for Coach George, for doing that for Coach George, there's, there's, hey, if that happened on one of my teams, with my coach and our camaraderie and how tight we were for our coach, mm. bro, somebody needs to, somebody should do that. Like straight up, I don't know if it's like a, I don't know their team. Faundo is still on there. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Mo, Mo could be that one. It, uh, be Mo, very... Mo too, Mo's too. Uh, he's too valuable. I mean, is he Isn't playing he? a lot this series? Not a whole he's, lot. No, I, feel, I just think he doesn't play that much at all. This, the, I mean, and it's obvious. But then it's obvious because they had beef with the wife. I think it's gonna be obvious. Any anyone that clocks Calvin, it's gonna be a retaliation. We're all gonna know. Yeah, that but is. it has to. Be, but then it has to be a player that's trying to earn his keep. One of the rookies or some, put him in. Bam, just clock Man, his ass. That's some old school stuff. I, I would. Yeah, like to see stuff like I that. Love to be honest, that. as long as no one gets completely hurt, but eh, you need some tension every now and then. Lots of money on the line. Someone dollars. <laughs> someone go get him. <laughs> Too old, lead. Too old, lead. Who cares? Chopper can handle it too, man. He he loves yeah. this type of stuff. He can handle it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, all I know is game three. Game three is going to be interesting altogether. Like yeah. they they got to figure I, some things out. San Miguel's been coasting. I haven't, They've been, a, I haven't watched a PBA game in a while. I'm tuning in for that one. Eleven game win streak, right? They haven't lost. Yeah, they haven't. Game. They haven't lost. They haven't lost since they got Benny Boatwright. And yeah, it's it's, it's crazy because. Like certain guys have Terrence hasn't even played yet. Simon like, hasn't played a lot of Bro, he can shoot he's he's basically nice, bro. 
he's a taller, more efficient Arwin. So imagine like mm -hmm. who can post, who, who can go to the block he here, post. here and there, and get a bucket. Physicality, yeah. he can, he can, he can, he can drive, after and that's when they were winning everything. Yeah, he, he can, can handle it enough to. It's it's yeah, it's ridiculous. He's tough, bro. He's tough. Yeah, that's he's only twenty six too. He's only twenty six. Yeah. Uh, so he coming back for more. Oh, he, oh yeah. I mean, I would say, I don't. I would think so. He, he should. He should fill in for JB once JB's uh, all set and, and and done. It'd be cool to put him on the national team eventually. But he like that national team type. It's, I mean, I, he's 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 in the running. He's good. I mean, in terms in terms of the conversations that we had before about the national team and what that stretch four spot. He complements I mean, Junmar really well. They do need a, need a light skinned to replace Gabe. We always we always needed like a Ronnie Dell type of figure. He could that four. Good hair. He got good hair. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie you Jamie like, Malonzo's he could be technically the next Gabe if he applies himself the right way. Jamie are Malonzo. You saying, are you saying Jamie Malonzo doesn't apply himself? I mean, he's so young. He still has a he's lot of American Day. to do. Yeah. <laughs> He, he's got to work on a floater. He's got to work on his mid-range for sure. According he's to my sources in high places at Hanevra, a.k.a. Jared Dillinger, uh, Jamie La Malonzo does not work hard. Yeah, okay. Is that is that, are you asking me that? What? That's what just what my question is. That's just what my sources oh, okay. He doesn't want to be Gabe Norwood or else he would work G hard. <laughs> No, I'd be <laughs> no, no, that's not a source. That's you're just trying to ruffle up some feathers. <laughs> Going into all Filipino conference, uh, try to disrupt us. No, man, he's got the, he's got all the bells and whistles. Just got to connect the dots with a couple more concepts. I think you know, take his he'll take his talents to another level. I think a couple more things, man. He, he's got a lot going on for himself. Yeah, but, he's talented. All right, well. That should do it for another episode of C2C, Let It Fly. We talked about a lot of things. Please, you guys, check out our upcoming season two, sponsored by Smart. We're gonna be doing a lot of things, man. We're gonna be doing a uh, Panoi Euro Steps, as you can see here. We're gonna be talking to a lot of different people, whether that's on stream or on TV, and of course, our YouTube channel. So make sure you like, subscribe, let us know in the comments what you guys want us to talk about next. And I'm your host, JD, with Gabe and Saul. Till next time, peace out, you guys. C2C. Bye.